Hello, Read 3302 folks. Uh, it's Dr. Ryan again. Um, most of you, if not all of you, should have been, um, had already completed your assessment project, so congratulations. Um, I hope that you've turned those in. I hope you learned a lot about your students when you did those projects, and I hope that most, if not all, of the practicum issues are resolved. Um, so way to stick through that. I know it's been a challenge this semester, um, so I really appreciate you know your, your, your perseverance um, your professionalism and the ways that you sort of just remember that you needed to find a way to get into the schools to do this kind of learning. So I hope now that we finally can apply what you've been learning that you're starting to really bring it to life and that it's feeling really helpful for you. So that's my hope. Um, you now get to do the second of the three projects, right, which is the interactive read aloud. And I just wanted to take a few minutes, this will be a short video, but I want to take a few minutes to cover a couple of key points as you plan for this project, okay? So first of all, um, like with the assessment project, you should be working off of the template provided, okay? Um, and you'll see it says on the template, anything in this font, this sort of purpley font that I know you can see when you print it out, um, should be typed into your plan, right? So this is, those are the things you're going to fill in. You wanna make sure that you're filling in all of these purple sections and that you're answering in those purple sections, you're answering the kinds of questions that are given here. So these are prompts for what to write in each of these sections, okay? So it's really important that you do that um, in a really complete way because this is going to be your plan. Um, some very careful readers have noticed, congratulations, that um, at the very top here it says um, support for this assignment is located in the module five commentary. That is not true. Um, this course used to be taught in seven modules, and so what used to be module five is actually now module three. So um, for those of you who are taking this face-to-face, -face, that won't much matter for you, but for those of you taking it online, um, you, we are in module three, and everything you need is in module three. Module five, not for a while. So thank you for reading closely, but it's not something you have to worry about. Okay. Um, the general structure and setup to this lesson plan format is what I call and what you might have had in your linked classes called a before, during, and after plan, a BDA plan. Um, it's the plan general setup for an interactive read aloud, and you'll see it again in similar ways in your guided reading project, the third and last of your assessment projects. In my um, really condensed way of saying it, I like to say a before, during, and after plan is when you introduce some stuff, you do some stuff, and you talk about what you did to make sure you got where you thought you were going. Right, I call it the yellow brick road of lesson planning. First one step, next step, next last step, and did you end up where you tried to get in the beginning? Okay, that's just the really condensed way of thinking about it. What do you do before you do some stuff? What do you do during it to really do the teaching? And then how do you wrap it up so that you help kids see the learning that happened? That's the basic format, okay? So, let me check my notes here. Okay, so a couple key things that you need to think about um, when you're planning your interactive read aloud. Um, first of all, you'll work in this before, during, after kind of format. Um, second of all, this is an opportunity to teach a comprehension strategy through a read aloud book, okay? That means you have to choose a comprehension strategy to teach. Sometimes we say we wanna read aloud a book so that we learn about a content connection, right? We wanna read this book to learn about the civil rights movement, or we wanna read this book to learn about spiders or something like that, right? We have these different content things we can read about. In an interactive read aloud, a comprehension strategy is the content of the lesson. And I mentioned that a little bit in the first video. So you'll be doing a read aloud and you'll be asking students, you'll be teaching students how to think about their thinking, right? You'll be modeling, that's the key I'll get to in a minute, you'll be modeling things that good readers do. You'll be teaching them how to use those tools when they go and do their own reading, okay? So the story is nice and the book is nice and we'll have some opportunities to get into the story and the book. But really in this case, not for all read-alouds, but for this assignment, the book is an avenue to teach about how we read. It's an avenue through which we can teach about comprehension. 
okay? Hope that makes sense, that's really important. The comprehension strategy instruction is the content of this lesson. That's the objective in a six point uh, framework, okay? Six step plan. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Now, one of the keys people have said, well, what, what strategy do I teach? Um, that is your choice. However, we would highly recommend, and you've heard this from your instructors already, um, that you pick one of the strategies mentioned in the Module 3 commentary that was also the same set of strategies that was talked about on the VoiceThread presentation that Ms. Cannon did. Okay? So that list is monitoring comprehension. So how do we t help kids learn to check in on their own understanding, right? One way is to do a think aloud, right? So you might, you might teach kids how to do think alouds. You might model think alouds if you're doing a monitoring comprehension as your strategy. You might do activating and connecting to background knowledge, right? How do we have kids help kids use what they know to connect to the text, to understand the text in greater depth? The third strategy could be questioning, right? How do we ask questions of text? How do we use questions to keep our thinking going? Fourth strategy could be visualizing and inferring, right? How do we paint pictures in our minds as readers that help us to understand what's going on? How do we build pictures with the words so that we say, oh, I can see that happening. That makes sense, okay? Um, I think we're at five, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, five, um, determining importance especially as readers get into the intermediate grades, which of course is the point of this course, um, texts get more complicated, right? There aren't just a few words per page. We get a lot of information as readers on texts now. And we have to help in intermediate readers really think about, I'm getting all these words. How do I know what's going on, right? What's the main idea? What are the details? Um, what's most important to pay attention to? How do we know? Um, how do we read informational texts, right? So is the caption of a picture more important than the text in the paragraph or the map, right? So how do we help them think through those features of informational texts or other texts, hybrid texts especially? Um, so how do we know what's important when we read? How do we not get sidetracked into these little details that as good readers we go, oh no, that's not the point. How do we know that, right? How do we help kids learn that? And then the last one, I think we're up to six, is summarizing and synthesizing. Right? So how, when we read all these different things in a text, do we bring them together? Right? To either create a summary, a retelling, um, how do we pull the pieces of information together to build one understanding? And then even eventually, how do we synthesize across texts to build an understanding? Okay. So choose one of those strategies to be the content of your lesson. If you want to give it a slightly different name, um, you know, in determining importance, if you want to teach main idea. Right, that's an aspect of determining importance. Um, so you can, you can play with the names of it a little bit. You can take off a smaller piece of one of those strategies. That's at least okay with my um, section to do, my sections to do. If you wanna check with your instructor about that, um, if you don't have me as your instructor, you might wanna check with them just to double check. Um, but stay in the ballpark of one of those strategies, okay? And again, those are on the voice thread and they're in the commentary. So go back to that list, okay? All right, so that's what we teach, and we know we teach it through an interactive read aloud, and we know that the basic plan is a before, during, and after. We introduce some stuff, then we do the stuff, and then we check on what we just did, okay? The only other thing that's really important, we're gonna look at this in a second. Um, the only other thing that's really important to do in an interactive read aloud and to understand in an interactive read aloud is that you do the work. So what do I mean by that? Many of you should have heard by now of this idea called a gradual release of responsibility, right? That means that when kids don't know a lot and you haven't taught them yet, you have to do most of the work. You have to do the teaching because they don't know what you're gonna teach them yet. In a six step lesson plan, that would be the teacher input kind of section, right? You're doing the teaching, you're doing the work, you're helping give the students information. Eventually, that balance starts to shift a little bit. So as you go, you're not doing all the teaching, 
you're helping, the kids are starting to help you, the students are starting to help you do some teaching, right? So what do we call that? We usually call that guided practice, right, in a six-step format. So eventually, okay, so I was doing a lot, but you were learning things. Now you help me, and we'll do it together. Then what? You give the students a little bit more responsibility. Now you do it, I'm here to help you, right? An independent practice. You're still there, you're still the teacher, you're still supporting them. But instead of you doing all the work to teach, you're watching them, right? You're supporting them, it's still work. But in terms of the content of the teaching, the students are doing the activities, the students are the ones that are most involved, and you're there just as a support, okay? And eventually they can just go do it on their own completely, right? That's the gradual release of responsibility. Starts off where you have to do a lot of the work and eventually the students are doing the work, okay? And it's always both, right? We always teach and learn together, um, but that's the sort of classic model of how we can think about it. The reason that's important is because in an interactive read aloud, you are doing most of the work, especially when it comes to reading the text. So the kids are thinking, the kids are doing mental work, but they're not doing the work of reading, okay? When you get to uh, your guided reading lesson, it's kind of flipped. The kids are the ones who will be doing the reading and you will be there to support them, okay? So that's more on the kids. But now you should be the one doing the reading and doing a lot of the modeling. So let me sort of show you what I mean by that. Um, I don't know if you know this book. It's a great book. Westlandia by Paul Fleischman. Um, I modeled with this book in my face-to-face um, -face class the other day, and I thought it went um, pretty well, so I'm hoping it will be helpful for you guys as well. I'm not going to do the full modeling, but um, so if I were doing an interactive read-aloud with this book, right, um, pretend you, my students out there, right, um, pretend I wanted to work on main idea and details, right, which is a part of determining importance. Could also relate to summarizing and synthesizing. Right? but it's really a part of determining importance. Okay, so um, if I were doing an interactive read aloud and I wanted to teach that strategy and use this book, I might do something like, and this is not word for word, you should follow your template. I'm just going to give you a general idea, okay? You know, um, boys and girls, you know, I'm, we're gonna do our read aloud today. And today, what we're going to talk about when we do our read aloud is something called main idea and detail. Right? So think about it for a second. Have you ever heard that term? Have you ever heard main idea? What might I mean when I say main idea? Turn and talk to somebody next to you about what you think a main idea is. Okay? You would let the kids turn and talk. Okay. So we get some answers and we report back. Okay, so that might be main idea. What's a detail? I don't I don't remember exactly what that means. Will you somebody help me out? Tell me what turn and talk and figure out if you can come up with a definition of what details are. So you'd let the kids do that. Right. This does not have to be followed word for word. Please use your own creativity. Please use your own students' needs. It's just a guide, okay? Um, all right, so you do something, though, to introduce the idea that you're going to be teaching, right? This is the before part. Um, and then, you know, you'd say, okay, well, we're going to talk about those ideas, of main idea in detail, as we, as we read this book today. Look at that. Doesn't that look really interesting? I wonder who that is. He looks like he's dressed kind of funny, so... We'll have to see. I wonder if that's the book is going to tell us. And look, there's some stuff, pictures on the back too, right? So, isn't that cool? They're on stilts, right? So you sort of get kids used to the book. Here we go. We're going to do this strategy. We're going to do this book. Okay? Make sense? I know it's a little weird because you're not in front of me, but we'll work with it. Um, so if you look on the template, right, we have a book who has an author. We have a strategy of focus. We have text selection considerations. So one reason I want to teach main idea um, with this text, I mean idea and details, is because there's actually quite a lot of text on each page. And I think not only is there a lot of text on each page, but some of the vocabulary is quite challenging. Um, so like this it says, there's the words outcast and civilization and tormentors and um, staple crop and um, ancient tradition and bedlam and Right? So there's, there's a lot of difficult words. But here's the great thing in a read aloud. I don't need to worry so much about, is this book on my student's level? Because they're not reading the book. They're reading it with me. 
but they're not having to do the work of decoding. I'm doing the work of decoding, and I can read this book. It's pretty safe, okay? So we can do, we can work with books and read alouds that are a little bit more advanced for students because their energy is going to go to the thinking, not to the decoding and fluency. Does that make sense? That's not true in guided reading. In guided reading, they are going to be the ones doing the decoding and the fluency stuff. So we're going to need to make sure we really are on their instructional level, right? That's why you did all that assessment to find their instructional level. This doesn't matter quite so much because I'm doing the reading, okay? Okay. So, but I do think that this book, because of that language, it's, it can be, I think, a little overwhelming for intermediate readers to think about how to read all of this text and figure out what they're supposed to come away with. What is the main idea? What's detail? What's the main idea? The other reason I think this book works really well, and I'll model this in a moment, is that this is a story about a little boy who builds his own civilization. Um, I think it has lots of great curricular connections. I think it's really interesting. I think um, it's even a little bit about sort of bullying and how kids who are different think differently, how they can, um, how their peers can start to really respect their abilities. So I think there's a lot of really good stuff this book does. Um, but one thing it does is that, especially as you get farther into the book, there's sort of a different topic on each page. So this page is sort of about his food source. And I'll show you, I'll model this in a second. And then this page sort of becomes about the way he makes cloth and clothing, right? And then this page becomes about how he, is about how he builds businesses, right? So in his civilization that he's making, there kind of is a main idea on almost every page, especially once you get farther in that is supported by details. So I think it'll be really easy for me to model, to pull out those main ideas and to pull out those details with students when I read this book. That was my thinking about why I chose this book if I'm teaching something like main idea and detail. There are a thousand other books that would do just as well, some that would do better um, in teaching this. It doesn't have to be, there's not one book that can teach the strategy. But there are some books that lend themselves more easily to teaching certain strategies than others. So that's what you need to think about when you think about what book you choose. Okay? There's no right answer, but there might be better answers. Okay? So just be thoughtful and be able to explain why. So again, if I were doing this, I would have introduced it and I would say, okay, we're going to do main idea in detail. And I didn't print out my graphic organizer, but um, I'll show you in a second. So I would start reading. right? Of course he's miserable, moaned Wesley's mother. He sticks out like a nose, snapped his father. Listening through the heating vent, Wesley knew they were right. He was an outcast from the civilization around him. He alone in his town disliked pizza and soda, alarming his mother and the school nurse. He found professional football stupid. He refused to shave half his head, the hairstyle worn by all the other boys, despite his father's bribe of $5. So... As a reader, I'm going to pause here because I just read a lot of words. And I'm going to think about what's the main idea so far that the authors told us? Of this section that we've read, what's the most important thing? And what's just a tale? What supports? What are the little pieces that support that main idea? And I'm going to look, and I, you know, is it the fact that he doesn't like pizza and soda? Is that what this whole section is about? Especially if I look at the pictures. I don't see a lot about pizza. And it wasn't really mentioned anywhere else. It was just that one place. It's probably not the main idea, right? So let's think, what would the main idea be? As a reader, I'm thinking, I like this sentence here. He was an outcast from the civilization around him. Well, that sort of seems to be the main idea. That's why his mother and father were saying that he stuck out. And then this list looks like a list of details that describe why he's an outcast, right? Why he doesn't fit in. So if I think of this as the main idea, then I see that him disliking pizza and him not liking football and him not having the haircut everyone else has, those are details that support the main idea that Wesley doesn't fit in, right? And so I'm pausing in my modeling here. So what you could do is you could have a graphic organizer, right, that sort of shows main idea with maybe some spikes sticking out for supporting details. And I would go ahead and fill that in on my chart, right? Main ideas, he's an outcast, and then the details are doesn't like pizza, has his haircut, right? So you're, you're showing. You're not saying, what's the main idea on this page? Who can answer? 
because they haven't learned it yet. You're doing the teaching. So it's okay for you to do it and you model it and then think about it. Okay? So then I would go on and I would write, I would read this page. Okay, right, and we do the same sort of thing. And you don't have to stop every page. You'll see in the in the plan, I think it asks you to stop three or four times. Um, and your book will guide you too. There's some books where it's easier to stop more often. But I'm gonna do one other example. Um, so I would, you know, I'd be reading and I'd be pausing when appropriate. So then here's another page. He's building his own society here. Fur fruit appeared, yellow at first, then blushing to magenta. You hear how this is pretty advanced language? So, okay. Wesley picked one and sliced through the rind to the juicy purple center. Here's the other tricky part about doing a read aloud. We're doing kind of two things. We're teaching comprehension strategies, right? And that's really important. That's the point of the lesson. But we're also reading a book. So don't be afraid to react to the book, to let kids pause and react to the book, right? So it's okay to say something like, Wesley picked one and sliced through the rind to the juicy purple center. He took a bite and found the taste an entrancing blend of peach, strawberry, pumpkin pie, and flavors he had no name for. You could say something like, that sounds delicious. I wonder, yeah, you know, you could have a, do a turn and talk, or you could say, who thinks they may have tasted something like that? Or is that what you thought these were going to taste like? Because they don't look that delicious to me. But you can react. You can discuss the book. It's okay. You don't have to just say, what is the main idea? <laughs> Next page, right? Remember, you're reading and enjoying the story and doing comprehension. The comprehension is the point, but you don't have to lose those other reactions, okay? So, you know, here's this, so then this page is really easy to say, okay, well, what's, you know, what's the main idea? What's, you know, what are all these details that we see in the pictures, that we read in the words? What do all those build up towards? And I think the idea here is that this is about his food, right? We see him eating, we see about him eating a food here, he talks about what he eats for breakfast, the juice that he drinks, how he boils the roots to make different kinds of food, right? And so all of these are details about the kind of food he eats, which is the main idea, okay? So you go through the story and you do that. You find places to support students' comprehension in the strategy that you're using. You um, go through and, and find some places to stop and react to the book, right? To, to be readers, not just comprehension machines. Um, and, and so both of those are important and that's how you go through the read aloud, okay? So that's the during. You did some stuff at the beginning to introduce it. And don't be afraid to do something, um, again, this is good for my sections, double check with your instructor if you need to. Um, don't be afraid to do something a little bit more creative, right? Um, in my face-to-face -face sections, we've been doing a lot of modeling of that. Um, for example, let me see if I can find a good example. Okay, pretend and I'm not sure this is the best way to do it for this lesson, but just think for a second. Pretend that we looked, pretend that I showed them just this picture for the very beginning, right? And what if I said, what are some, de like some details that we notice about this picture, right? What are the, can we find, so the big idea is the whole picture, but these details are just little specific, little things that we can see. Who can find a, de a detail in this picture, right? And somebody might say, there are five bottles on the table. And somebody else might say, you know, two people, three people are wearing yellow shirts. And somebody might say, there's a guy in the back with binoculars, right? You could do, you could introduce the idea of main idea and detail with like a, a picture like this, right? Getting them to say, how can we pay attention to details? What are details and how do we look for them? Um, and then you could connect it saying, you know, we just did that with pictures, but authors do that with words too. We have main ideas of words and details using words, and those are in books, right? So you could make a connection like that. It doesn't just have to be, who knows what a main idea is, although that's fine, right? It doesn't have to be more than that. Something just to get them thinking, okay? Um, so I think that is about it. You'll see at the end after you, so during the reading, you have these places where you stop. Um, to model your thinking aloud with the strategy. You can also stop to prompt discussion and interaction. Remember, you'll be doing a lot of the thinking and talking, so don't lose the kids. Um, make sure they're staying engaged with you. So do a lot of stop and talk, a lot of turn and talk, a lot of think, pair, share, a lot of, you know, raise your hand if, or put your finger on your nose if you agree, or, you know, keep the kids engaged. Um, and then you'll do a few things after the reading. There's a place where you can do a conclusion so, you know, just ask for a student's response, like, you know, what did we learn, or how was that, or what was your favorite part, or, and be thinking about why, right? Care about what they say. Um, 
And then there's a place to do a big idea question, right? So what does this make you sort of think about? Like for this book, it might be, you know, have, we, have you ever thought about making your own society? And what's one thing you would want to be sure you included in your society, right? Gets us a couple ideas. Just a way of sort of extending the book just slightly, okay? And then there's a spot for you to do some reflection about how it went. Okay, so that's the assignment. Um, I hope that helps give you a little bit more information. Um, remember, uh, you use the template. Um, choose one of the strategies from the voice thread and commentary. Um, your plan in general is a before, during, after plan. You'll see that you do stuff before, you read and you teach um, the comprehension strategy in the lesson, you wrap it up. Um, you're balancing this sort of need to sort of read the book as a reader and encourage kids to react as readers while also doing a lot of the comprehension instruction. So that's a balance, play with that. Remember, you do the work. So do the modeling, do the reading. Don't just ask kids to answer questions. Don't say, you know, what is the main idea here? Or how are you visualizing? You model it. As a reader, I'm really creating this picture when I read, and my picture has this, right? Explain it, teach it. This is the chance for you to really teach. Um, I hope that helps. Um, I hope the plans are great. I hope you have a wonderful time reading with your students. And after this, you're two thirds of the way done your practicum projects. So congratulations. Um, and I hope your semester continues to go well. Bye.